Thin provisioning is a new functionality in storage spaces that you may not have seen before. And so in this video entitled Storage Spaces and Thin Provisioning, I want to cover it. Now, it's not going to be a long video, but I wanted it in a separate video so you'd get it and pay attention to it and not just kind of, you know, blow past it. But Storage Spaces utilizes a management feature, if you will, called Thin Provisioning. Now, what this actually does, and it's really neat, is it allows you to set a maximum size for your storage space that is larger than your actual disk space. You heard right. I can set or I can provide my users a maximum disk size that's larger than the actual disk space that I have. Now, what this does is it lets you create multiple storage spaces per pool each one with a different resiliency type and size. Now, if you go back and listen to the video on understanding storage spaces, you're kind of thinking, wow, this is exciting, Mark. This sounds exactly like a, the dynamic disk of old and uh, really happy that you're pleased with this thing. But when you start to dig under the hood and see what it's doing, especially with this thin provisioning, it really starts to look like a whole new animal here. Number one, I can make space available to people larger than the actual disk space that I have. I'll explain that in just a second. Then I can create multiple storage spaces per pool, and each one of these spaces can have a different resiliency type and size, and storage spaces will manage all of that for me in the background. Now, let me give you an example here of how this thin provisioning works. First of all, let's say we have 10 users and we tell each of these users, okay, you have 10 gigabytes of space out there on the network. Now, that would require 100 gigabytes if all 10 users were to utilize all their space. Well, if we're working with a department, a group, an organization, that we're pretty sure they're not going to use all that space, at least not right away, we can use thin provisioning. This allows me to create 10 10 gigabyte spaces for these folks on a storage pool that actually only has 50 gigabytes in actual free space on the drives. Okay, watch that. I've got 50 gigabytes of actual space, but I'm committing myself to 100 gigabytes by offering 10 spaces of 10 gigabytes each. Now, how's that going to work out? Well, Storage Spaces manages this in the background, and the actual disk space gets allocated to the users as they utilize it, not just kind of sitting out there waiting for them to fill it up. And you can think of this almost like we're borrowing disk space. But it's not very efficient to go out and buy large chunks of disk space at today's prices and not actually fill them up for, say, 14 months then at the end of the 14 months, the disk space has dropped by half or whatever. So this lets us go ahead, offer that much space to people, manage it in the background, feed space to them as they actually utilize it. And notice, if my storage spool starts to run out of space, I can add more physical disk space. It'll email me. It'll let me know, hey, you're starting to run out of disk space here. You need to do something. And what happens if I just kind of get busy and I let it run out of space? Well, the storage space will, first of all, stop and the data won't be accessible. But I can go back in and set it back up and it will be read only until I add more physical space. So it's not a disaster, but it's still not a good thing, right? So storage spaces, along with the functionality called thin provisioning, brings a whole new way to think about disk and disk space management to Windows Server. So again, this is probably something that you should go out and read about, play with it just a little bit, get it burned into your brain before you go take the exam. But you can bet you're going to see questions about this. Don't let them confuse you on the exam. You can allocate to users more disk space than you actually have.